Faith for Today with Colin Urquhart and Julia Fisher. You came back from your holidays, Colin, and on Sunday you said to the church, my prayer life has been transformed by what God has been showing me over the last few weeks. You're sharing that with us on the programmes this week. We're talking about what it means to really appreciate and understand that the fullness of Jesus, of Christ, is in us. Yes. Let me, uh, let me uh, concentrate today on one particular issue, and that is of healing, because this is a very practical issue. And I want people to understand that I'm not talking theological theory. I'm talking about life. Jesus said he came to give us the fullness, not of doctrine, but the fullness of life. And all true doctrine is about the life. You know, the life came before the doctrine, if you like. Uh, The doctrine is trying to explain the life that we have. And this is what the Word of God does for us. It describes the life that God has given us in Christ. And we talked yesterday about the fact that that life means we have God's wisdom within us. We have the one who is wise. We have the wisdom of God because we have Christ in us. And the scripture says he is our wisdom from God. That we have his righteousness, that we can live the lives that are right in God's sight because we have his righteousness. Now, we know that God is righteous, but it going a step further to say, I have his righteousness and therefore can live or he can express his righteousness through me. It doesn't matter how unrighteous I am in my, well, it does matter, but I mean, you know, even though there are unrighteous things about me, he can still express his righteousness through me if I learn to trust in him rather than myself. And the same with the holiness, as we saw yesterday, that the Holy One is living in us. Now, let's talk about healing. Many of us who listen to this program regularly understand that God is our healer. Right from the beginning of the, the Old Testament in the book of Exodus, God reveals himself to his people as the Lord who heals. We know that it's one of the great covenant names of God to say that God is our healer. And we know, therefore, that when Jesus Christ came to earth, he healed people because That is an expression of who God is, and he came to reveal the nature of the Father to us. Uh, But you see, it wasn't enough for Jesus just to come and say, God is your healer. He wanted to demonstrate that because he's the healer, therefore, he wants to actually do works of specific healing in the lives of his people. And we know that God has in the last generation restored the healing ministry to many parts of the church which had really lost sight of that healing ministry. And we can understand, therefore, that we can pray and we can lay hands on one another because the Scripture said if believers lay hands on one another, um, they will be healed. The only trouble is, Julia, that lots of believers lay hands on other people and they don't get healed. And we know the Scripture in James. We were looking at that recently when we are going through the book of James. Uh, to say that if anyone is sick, let him call for the elders of the church and they will anoint him. But, you know, some people get anointed and they go through that biblical pattern, but they still don't get healed. And this calls you to understand, well, wait a minute, what's going on here? Is, is the scripture not right? Now, there's something, there's something we're lacking in, in our understanding, you see. Because in the Old Testament, God is the healer. In the Old Testament, God is righteous. In the Old Testament, God is holy. But it's only through what Christ has done for us that he becomes our righteousness. He becomes our holiness within us. And you see, in the same way, he becomes not just the one who is able to heal, but he becomes the healing. Now, Let me go through that again because it's very important to get hold of. He is righteous, so he becomes our righteousness. Now, the righteousness is the life that expresses his righteousness, who he is as the righteous God. The holiness is his life that expresses that he is the holy God. His healing is the life that expresses that he's the healer. So you see... 
Jesus is not just righteous. He is our righteous life. He is not just holy. He is our holy life. He is not just the healer. He is our healing life. And I was saying earlier in the week that so often we pray and wonder why we don't get always what we ask for God. And I think there's probably many people listening that say, well, I've asked God to heal me and he hasn't healed me. And I've gone through all these things, you know, that, that are possible, the laying out of hands, the anointing, I've confessed faith, I've prayed the prayer of agreement, I've done all these kind of things, you know, and, and still the healing hasn't happened. Well, let me say this to you. Christ is not only your healer, he is your healing. And if he is within you, then your healing is within you. And do you remember that when Jesus was teaching his people, his disciples, to pray with faith, he said, whatever you ask in prayer, that means any time you ever ask anything in prayer, believe that you have received it, and it will be yours. Now, when do we receive it? How can you believe that you have received something if you don't believe you have it? It seems a strange thing for Jesus to say, but you see, what he's saying is, believe that you have received what you're asking for because you've received me. You've received my life. So when you ask for healing, believe that you've received that, not because you asked, but because you already have Christ in you, the hope of glory. You already have the healer. Therefore, you already have the life of the healer within you. So Jesus is saying, whatever you ask in prayer, believe that you have received it. It's already there. It's already there within you because you have the fullness of Christ within you and it will be yours. And you see, this is like bong bong, switching on the lights. Because so many people are asking God to heal them as an event. Their healing is somewhere out there. It's up in heaven or God has it and is he going to do it? Isn't he going to do it? Will he give it or won't he give it? And you see what Jesus is saying? Is, no, you have the life within you. And this is why he says to the disciples, the kingdom of God is not over here or over there, but the kingdom of God is within you. You see, all the life of the kingdom, all the power of the kingdom, all the authority of the kingdom is within you. So how does this transform your prayer life? Well, you already have what you need. Well, then why ask? Because the asking releases into your experience, into the circumstances, that which God has given you in Christ. So, if I need healing, I have the healer within me. But I also have the healing of the healer. And as I pray, that healing which is in me is going to get released into my soul, into my body, into the marriage, into circumstances, into whatever it is that needs to be healed. Now, what would you say to the person, Colin, who really wants to believe what you're saying, but yet feels that, I daren't, I daren't believe that because if it doesn't work out, if I'm not healed, then I, it, obviously I, 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 there's something wrong with me. I don't have enough faith. There's a, there's a fear creeps in. Well, how does faith come? Faith comes from hearing God's word. So what I'm doing is giving revelation of the word of God. But what I would say to anybody in the situation you just outlined is what you need to do now is to go to the scriptures and to see all the, the scriptures there are. I think I, I wrote a book about being in Christ Jesus in 1983. It's over 20 years ago. And in there is outlined all the scriptures um, about what it means to be in Christ. I think there are 100 and, over 150 of them. I give the revelation of, of what God has given us in Christ. But find these scriptures. There's a lot of them in Ephesians and 
uh, Colossians especially. You can start there. Um, but, you know, get your concordance out. Find all these scriptures and, and ask the Holy Spirit to make these verses of scripture live within you. So you can see this isn't the teaching of Colin Urquhart. This is the teaching of the Word of God. This is the teaching of the New Testament. This is what God says we already have within us. This is how Jesus is telling us to pray. It's not how Colin Urquhart's telling us to pray. Jesus is saying, whatever you ask in prayer, believe that you have received it. And you see, when you look at some of the prayer promises that Jesus gave, like, for example, whatever you ask the Father in my name, he will give it to you. You think, well, that's, you know, that's a very far-reaching kind of promise. My prayer life doesn't match that. And that's probably because you don't really believe that you have what God has given you in Christ. So you ask the Father, and through the Christ who lives in you, the Father will give you whatever you ask in his name. Because to ask in his name is to ask in his person. Say, well, Lord, you've given me, Father, you've, you've given me this fullness of life in Christ. Now I need to see more of his love manifested in my life, or I need to see more of this healing manifested in my life. And you see, that's the kind of asking. And, and we need, Jesus said, to persevere in prayer until we actually see the evidence of that which he's put within us being expressed through us. You've been listening to Faith for Today, presented by Julia Fisher. This program is sponsored by Kingdom Faith. For further information, visit our website, kingdomfaith.com. 